So can there be many different forms and species of consciousness and can there be many different magnitudes for each of those species of consciousness? And I think we have to say probably, I guess, if the, if the laws of physics don't like prohibit that, right. then given enough time, whatever is possible in the laws of physics eventually occurs. So we can say forward in time of us, some distance, statistically speaking, there should be some consciousness that so vastly eclipses our consciousness, either in just sheer magnitude or form, like a completely different form of consciousness, then we would be a little little mini trivial version of that consciousness and we can do full-blown photorealistic dreams where light triangulates with perfect trigonometry off of dream chandeliers. And if we can do that, then an emergent future consciousness far vaster than ours that emerges in the evolution of reality the way humanity did could run in principle the simulation, right? Mm -hmm. Like on a mathematical game board, I'll call it. So they think of the mathematical substrate and then upon that mathematical substrate, they run algorithms or you could call them simple programs. And certain simple programs can play out such as cellular automata and certain types of simple programs can give probability spreads, I would call them. Mm. So. It, it would say, well, this can happen in the evolution with the probability of, you know, 20%. And then this can happen in the evolution with a probability of 1% mm. and so on. And so that reality then, let's say, is just like our reality. And you get to the point where, the, where this emergent conscious entity capable of running the simulation has run the simulation. So you have to allow object, I think, David, you probably had the idea in our paper, the self-simulation hypothesis interpretation of quantum mechanics, to call that thing that goes across time a strange loop. And mm. I thought that was a great name. A feedback loop is really just where two things are influencing one another, like a guitar string or two birds in nature, any two things that are influencing one another. In a, in a sort of communicative way, vibrations or sound or anything is going back and forth, a trans-temporal or a cross-time feedback loop would be a case where something in the future is influencing something in the past, which is influencing that thing in the future, which is influencing that thing in the past. A feedback loop between two place, two systems across time. So in our paper, we argued how our version, this interpretation of quantum mechanics, proposes that all things are in different degrees of co-creation or influence across time and by great distances in space, so by a kind of instant connectivity. If that were how reality is, then when you think about our descendants in a hundred years or any point in time, and by the way, most of our descendants will not be human, and they will be alien. They won't be human because their DNA won't be encoded in a way that defines them as homo sapien. Think speciate. So there was one way that we arranged DNA four billion years ago when the first microbial life existed on Earth. And then that DNA got a re rearranged many, many times, a hundred million times. And so there have been a hundred million different arrangements of DNA to make the hundred million different animals. So we're all cousins with the wow. lizards and butterflies and it's dinosaurs, crazy. right? We all came from the same original mother mother DNA. So if you kind of say, well, let's jump off from hum humans, which is just one arrangement of the, of the genetic code. And we say, well, if that were the first, we just take the branch of the tree from there, then going forward in time, we will fractally branch out. It's called speciating. So we will speciate and it'll branch and it'll branch and give it enough time, there would be more than a hundred million different species that, uh, that branch out from us. Most of our uh, descendants uh, will not be born on this planet and the vast majority of them will not be human and yet they will be our descendants. So wow. our, our descendants forward in time may be able to develop an understanding of physics and quantum computation and have the ability to create ever more impressive simulations indistinguishable from reality including their own self-simulation and if that were to be possible 
then it gets into a little bit of an enigma because then you say, well, wait a minute, if they were capable of running a self-simulation with fully realistic physics all the way up to the evolution and emergence of themselves, then can we just loop that into a circle and reject linear causality or linear time? And there's implications in quantum mechanics and even other physics that we can reject linear time. But if you did do that, now you don't need a real physical reality. You can say it's all made of information, in this case, consciousness. And you could say that the simple program playing as algorithms on the mathematical game board lives in the mind of this emergent thing forward of us in time, our descendants, and it emerges, it comes from itself. It's bootstrapping itself or self-actualizing or self-simulating. To me, with the Fermi paradox, with the SETI program coming up bust, which by the way, they were looking in the past. Right. They never looked forward in time because we don't have the technology to do that. It may even be prohibited by physics perhaps to move you know, to do that unless you can get particles to travel it faster than the speed of light. The point is we were looking in the past. And if we could look in the future, we would see, of course, all of our vast fractal network of descendants, but we don't, we don't see that. And so that's what the SETI was. So now we got these things supposedly visiting us, aliens, ETs, and they're reporting weird stories from people who see it, these things blip in and out. They're just there and then they're not there. And sometimes they're amorphous and almost like plasma. And then other times you get reports that they're solid or that they morph from looking solid to being amorphous looking or vaporous. Whatever the heck these things are, perhaps our descendants in the future have learned uh, about some sort of connection between whatever consciousness is, we say we don't know what that word means exactly, and mathematical physics. So the self-simulation hypothesis is an attempt to try to connect those ideas of consciousness with mathematical physics, because it is a mathematical universe. So if one wants to say that the universe is the ground of reality is consciousness, if they had some kind of metaphysical philosophy like that, it's possible it could be true, but we can also say, well, whatever it is, it's behaving very mathematically at the fundamental level. The whole team at Quantum Gravity Research needs your help. We're asking for $1 a month. Please click the link in the description below to join our giving circle.